starting this series this week uh, called The Promise. And this is really, this series is a series talking about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is so relevant uh, for today. And oftentimes what happens is the Holy Spirit can almost get shunned away or shied, shied away from. Uh, we can talk a lot about, as far as Christians, we can talk a lot about God the Father and the love of the Father. And we sing songs like, he loves us. Uh -huh. he. We talk about the love of the Father, like, oh yeah, the lavishing love of the Father. He loves me. And we could talk about that, and that's great, that's true. And we could talk a lot about the sacrifice of the Son and how important the sacrifice of the Son is. And oh my goodness, what an incredible thing Jesus did. And it was, it is still uh, so relevant. It's because because he died and rose again. And so we celebrate that as well. But oftentimes we can talk a lot about the Father and the Son and we can forget or almost shy away from the Holy Spirit. And I wanna to talk to you for the next few weeks really on the importance of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is God on earth today. The Holy Spirit is God on earth today. God the Father, the Bible says, is on the throne in heaven. The Bible says when Jesus died and rose again, he ascended to heaven and now he's at the right hand of the Father. So God the Father's on the throne in heaven. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And now the Bible says that Jesus said he, God's gonna, the Father's gonna ascend, he's gonna send, excuse me, a, a, a helper that will walk with us. And so here's what happens. The Holy Spirit was sent here now to walk with us daily. And so really, the Holy Spirit and the purpose of the Holy Spirit was really to continue to show us God's original intent for you and I. And that is this, that he desires to walk with us. We see it from the beginning of time, the God the Father walked daily with Adam and Eve. The Bible says, you can read it in Genesis, the Bible says that he literally would come down in the afternoon time and the Father would walk with Adam and Eve before sin. And he would walk. Then Jesus came and Jesus, the Bible says, came. He left heaven and he laid down his, his Godhead and he, he came down. He was still God and man, but he said, I'm now, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna walk with these disciples and these people. Why? Because I wanna show them my heart is to always be that I wanna walk with him. And now the Holy Spirit is the same way. He wants to come and he wants to walk with you and I daily. The cool thing is Jesus actually said in the scripture, and we'll read it throughout this series, but Jesus actually said, it's better. It's to your advantage that I leave. He tells the disciples, could you imagine being one of the disciples that is walking with Jesus, seeing all the incredible miracles, seeing him, seeing him do all these incredible things and talking about all these incredible things and seeing him, knowing he's the son of God, calming the storms and feeding the thousands. And, and he says, hey, listen, 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 listen. It's better that I'm gonna leave you. Uh, Jesus, uh, no, like, well, how would that be better? And he says, because I wanna, ascend, I wanna send someone, the Father's gonna send someone that's gonna be able to walk with you. Why? Because Jesus could only be in one place at one time walking with us. The Holy Spirit is now with us all, in, everywhere, anywhere, walking with us daily. And so here's what this series is for all of us. This series is an invitation an invitation for all of us to walk in a deeper relationship with God. This series is an invitation. An invitation is you have to accept it and receive it. It's an invitation to all of us to say, I wanna walk in a deeper relationship with God. And I wanna do that by learning about the Holy Spirit. That being said, when I say deeper, I'm not talking about, when I say deeper, I'm not talking about louder or wilder. I'm talking about closer. We say deeper, oftentimes we can think this deep relationship with the Holy Spirit means we have to be all loud. And if you grew up in a church like I did, it means you wild. You know what I'm saying? You running around, you doing stuff. People are like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Either I'm just doing it because everybody else is doing it. Come on, somebody. We're not talking about wilder when we say deeper. What we're talking about as we say deeper is we want to walk in a closer relationship with God. We do that through the Holy Spirit. And I believe. This is why the enemy of our soul tries to get us to shun away from the Holy Spirit, tries to create this thought process or mind, mind uh, thoughts and mind games that tells us that the Holy Spirit is weird or the Holy Spirit is irrelevant or the Holy Spirit's just this, like, this ghost that floats around the room. That's, that's not the Holy Spirit at all. 
And I want to show that to you today, and I want to, as we walk through this series, I want, to, I want to invite you to a deeper relationship of walking closer with God. And the scripture says in James chapter 4 and verse 8, he says, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. If you draw near to God, the scripture says, he'll draw near to us. And that's what this is. It's an invitation for us to draw near to God these next few weeks for uh, allow him to begin to teach us and, and begin to challenge us so that we'll walk closer with him daily. Amen? I wanna show you some scriptures. Act chapter one and verse four. It says, on one occasion while he was eating with them, talking about Jesus, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Today, I wanna to talk to you on the topic of the gift. The, the name of it is the promise because God promised the, the, the Holy Spirit to us. I wanna to talk to you about the promise of the gift to us. The promise of the gift to us. And that is the Holy Spirit. It says it right here. But wait for the gift that my father promised. It's really this, it's the scripture that we're going to use throughout the whole series. It's a promise that we will have the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, many of you know, that if you accept Christ, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life, the Bible says that you are now saved. And from being saved now, the Holy Spirit now dwells in us. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, the Bible says, dwells in us. And we're going to talk about that as we continue on in this series. But I have to say this, before we ever could walk closely with the Holy Spirit, we have to know who the Holy Spirit is. And I want to talk to you about questions that I hear about the Holy Spirit. One of them is, who is the person of the Holy Spirit? Who is the person of the Holy Spirit? Do you know that 58%, it's a statistic online, so it has to be true, 50 58% of people that are Christians think or believe that the Holy Spirit is an it or a thing. 58% of believers, and you may be part of that 58, it's totally fine. But I want to show you today that the person of the Holy Spirit is a person. You can't have God the Father, and he's a person. Jesus the Son, he's a person. And then the third of the Godhead, the Trinity, the third of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit in He's an it. No, he's, the, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's part of the Godhead. And here's what's so important, that we would understand God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all equally important in our lives. Why? Because they're all part of the Godhead. And so the Holy Spirit is a person. Here's why this is important. Because if we don't think or believe the Holy Spirit is a person, we can't have a personal relationship with him. You can't have a personal relationship with an it or a thing. Here's the interesting or concerning or questioning thing. Why is it that oftentimes we think the Holy Spirit is an it? Is it because He's called Holy Spirit. Or if you grew up in a church like I did, they called him the Holy Ghost. And I'm like, I don't want nothing to do with no ghost. Come on, somebody. I don't like ghosts. I don't watch PG-13 rated horror movies, much less R-rated horror movies. You know, I, I don't like being scared. <laughs> Why is it? As a culture, as a society, we have this concept of, and when I'm talking about society, I'm talking about as believers, we have this concept of the Holy Spirit being in it. One of the reasons, I think, uh, some of the reasons is maybe because of the way that he's been represented to us, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to show you a scripture in John chapter 14 and verse 16. This is where we know we see that the Holy Spirit is not a it, but he's a, he's a, he's a person. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. This is Jesus talking. I will give you another helper that he will abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. See, the Bible says the world, Jesus saying the world can't receive him. Why? Because you have to believe in Jesus and you have to know. And then the Bible says the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And it says he and him and he will abide for, for with us forever. Why? Because it's a picture to show us that he is not an it. It doesn't say it will abide with you. 
No, he will abide with us. Why? Because he wants us to know that he's a person that desires to walk with us daily. Here's the cool thing about the God we serve. God does not want to just walk with us so that we can walk with him. He desires to walk with us because he loves us so much that he wants to be in relationship with you and with me. He loves us so much that he would allow the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would come and be God on this earth. Why? Because he desires to be in relationship personally with you and I because he loves us and he's an incredible God. And so oftentimes we can look and we can say, I don't know if, if he's an he or I don't know if he, he's really with me. And, and we can think these things. And I think a lot of times, again, it could be because of the name. It could be because we call him. We don't say the fa- uh, God, we say God the Father, but we don't say the Jesus. And we do say the Holy Spirit. Maybe that's why people think maybe he's an it. I don't know. But here's what I do know. All throughout the scripture, we see different illustrations of who the Holy Spirit is. And we have different pictures. And the, through the scripture, it talks about the Holy Spirit can be rain. You know, and so maybe we think he's an it because the scripture talks about the Holy Spirit being rain. We see the Bible talks about the, being, the Holy Spirit being rivers or, or fire. We just, we just sang it today. You're a, you're a fire. You're a refining. And you're like, wait, what? Ah, ah, I want to be consumed. Wait, ah, what does that mean? And we can think that that means that we're sitting here, hear me, I'm just being honest, as Christians, and maybe you're not a Christian, that's totally fine. We can sit here and we can think, well, oh, okay, so like, I wanna be consumed by you, so like, all of a sudden, like, I'm not singing that song, because all of a sudden, like, like, there might be like fire in this room, like, I'm about to jet, I ain't trying to get burned up. But see, all of these are expressions of, of, of who the Holy Spirit or the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. They're, they're illustrations of expressions. When he talks about rain, it's this refreshing, how the Holy Spirit can refresh you and I and our souls. Talking about fire, it's not that we say he will, he will consume, and, oh my gosh, like we're gonna burn up naturally. No, it means God, the things that are impure in my heart, the Holy Spirit will come and burn away in your life. He'll burn away those desires. And so when we see these different illustrations of expressions of who he is, it's not meaning that he's an it, it just means these are things that he does for us. Does that make sense? So important when we see that. There's also a huge one everybody knows about, the really famous one when Jesus was being baptized. It says the Holy Spirit came down like a, like a dove. There's a picture of a dove. Look how, look how cool that dove is. Wow, nice dove, cool. <laughs> and so here's the thing. Then we can think, well, okay, well, if that's the case, if he came down like a dove, that means he's a dove, that means he's a bird, that means he's an it. No, that's not. He came down like a dove, meaning a dove is gentle. The Holy Spirit comes and he's gentle in our hearts. See, oftentimes people have the wrong representation of the picture of who the Holy Spirit is and he's gonna come and he's uh, this uncontrollable God and it's like this uncontrollable, like, ah! And no, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is gentle. I Meaning he's gonna come and he wants to wrap his arms around you and walk you and encourage you in the situations and seasons of your life. And so it shows us the pictures of who the Holy Spirit is, these illustrations that we see. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit's an it. It means that he's a person and the Bible wants to share with us uh, characteristics of who the Holy Spirit is. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14, it says, the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, this term fellowship in the Greek actually means intimacy so that we will be intimate with the Holy Spirit. You can't be intimate with an it. And oftentimes, hear me, when we're in our culture today, we hear intimacy and we think sexual. But that's not what the Bible's talking about. We're talking about an intimacy, a depth in relationship that's intimate with one another. You can have an intimate friendship with someone. A bro, bros, you can have a bro and you're intimate. Doesn't mean you're being sexual. It means that you have, you have a connection, a closeness, that you're with one another, fighting for one another, praying with one another, and you have this close friendship. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. This fellowship means this intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. You can't have an intimate friendship with a bird. You might have a bird at home and you might think it loves you. It don't. It don't love you. It, it, it would fly away as soon as you open that cage up. It'd be like, bye, see ya. <laughs> and you're like, bird, come back. No, it ain't coming back. See you later. I don't love you. <laughs> I didn't say that in the other service, so that's good. 
But you can't have a, hear me, hear me. You can't have a personal relationship with an it. You can only have a personal relationship with a person. And so the Holy Spirit is trying to show us through the scriptures how he's a person that desires, again, to walk with us and be personal with us in our lives. Does that make sense? And when we, when we hear oftentimes about the Holy Spirit, he's a person. And again, sometimes we can maybe struggle with that or not understand that. And I think oftentimes what happens is that we see or we've seen representations of what we think the Holy Spirit is based on what someone else has said or done. And here's what happens. People can misrepresent God. People can misrepresent the Holy Spirit and it can cause us to have a misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit. Don't let, hear me, and this is what this, this, this series is all about. It's an invitation. I want you to come to this series with this open mind and open heart that says, God, I just wanna learn more about you because I wanna be closer with you. So God, I wanna remove all of the things that I've seen and heard. And Jesus, I wanna seek the truth because you, as you, as I seek truth, I'll find truth. And so here's what happens. Don't let someone else's misrepresentation of what you have seen or think the Holy Spirit has caused you to misunderstand who the Holy Spirit is in our, in our lives. Because that can happen. I, if you've grown up in a church like me, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, maybe you've been to a church like when I grew up, that I grew up in. Let me tell you something, it was wild. I never knew what was gonna happen. I didn't know what people were gonna say. I got so scared sometimes. I'd be like, I just wanna leave, but I might, the Jesus might come down and rebuke me and might slap me. I don't, wanna, I don't know what to do. And I'm not making fun of, hear me. I'm not making fun of those type of churches. But I do know this that we can have this misrepresentation of the Holy Spirit and it can cause us to shy away from the Holy Spirit because of something that we've seen. And I know this, I'll tell you this, I believe this, I say this all the time. The Holy Spirit is not weird. I'll say it again and I want you to just get it in your mind. The Holy Spirit is not weird. You know who's weird? People. The Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. Now, am I making fun of those people? No, but here's what happens. Just because someone is expressing how they feel about something and we may think it's weird or not weird, that's between them and God. But I know this, the way someone expresses who the Holy Spirit is does not mean that's who the Holy Spirit is. God, the Holy Spirit's not weird. People are. And if you've been around long enough, you've seen some weird people. Come on, somebody. I just went to the game yesterday. Let me tell you something. I saw some weird people. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Y'all know what I'm talking about. It ain't even about the Holy Spirit. You're just weird. You know what I'm saying? People wearing banana costumes. <laughs> You're weird. I turned to the person I was sitting next to. I said, let me ask you this. This has nothing to do with the message. This is just me talking out my heart here. And if you wore the banana costume, we love you. But I, I, let me, I, I turned around to the person next to me. I said, let me ask you this. I said, is it worth sweating for three hours in a banana costume to be on the screen for five seconds? <laughs> And if you say yes, then you're the one that's weird. (laughs) I'm joking, but seriously, people are weird. People do weird things. And so here's what happens. Just because of something we've seen, again, I'm being funny, but I I I want this to be in your heart. Just because something that we've seen, don't allow it to cause you to misunderstand the Holy Spirit in your life because this is what I know. The enemy wants to use that. Why? Because he knows the Holy Spirit is a helper for you and I. And he wants everything in our lives to not be helped by the Holy Spirit. Because let me tell you something, we can't do it on our own. But with the Holy Spirit, my God, we can. We can't get free on our own. But let me tell you something, with the Holy Spirit, my God, we can. We can't get healed on our own. But let me tell you something, with the Holy Spirit, we can. We can't find the, the, the satisfaction in life on our own. But let me tell you something, with the Holy Spirit, we can. So the enemy will try to use anything he can use to try to cause us to misunderstand the Holy Spirit so that we won't have the helper that we desire to have and that he desires to be in our lives. Does that make sense? He's a person. You have to know firstly, he's a person. And then two, you have to know he's also, he's a person, but then also he has a personality. He has a personality. What is the personality of the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked. Here's what the scripture says. The scripture says that we are made in the likeness of God. You and I were made, and every human, we were made in the likeness of God. You and I all have personalities. So how interesting would it be 
if God made us in his likeness and gave us per personalities, but he has no personality. Jesus had a personality. The father we see has a personality. So how could the father have a personality? Jesus have a personality. We have personalities, but the Holy Spirit does not have a personality. The Holy Spirit has a personality. He has, and what is our personalities made of? Our personalities are made of our minds, our wills, and our emotions. The Holy Spirit, I'm just gonna talk to you. We're just teaching today. I hope this is okay. The Holy Spirit has a mind, a will, and emotions. The Holy Spirit does. And I wanna show it to you in your scripture. He has a soul, if you will. Souls, but we base our, and let me show it to you. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 18. Behold my servant who I've chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. That's God the Father. Then eight, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. It says, now that the just shall live by faith. And if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure. God's showing us that he has a personality, a soul, a mind, a will, and emotion. The Holy Spirit has a mind, a will, and emotion. Now here's the thing. The reason why the Holy Spirit has a mind, will, and emotion, and he wants us to know that, is so that we know that he has a mind. He has thoughts. And he desires for us to help think like he does. He has a will so that he desires to help us live like he does. He has, a, he has emotions. Why? Because he desires for us to know that he feels like we feel and we can feel like he feels. Does that make sense? I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. Okay, here we go. First Thessalonians, no, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 64 and verse four. For my thoughts are your thoughts. No, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, excuse me, and nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. The Lord has thoughts. The Holy Spirit has thoughts. And they're not our thoughts, they're his thoughts. So then Acts chapter seven and verse 51, check this out. Read this with me. You stubborn people, it says. Check this out. Your hearts and your ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a mind and we can resist the Holy Spirit. We can resist the mind of the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? Let me explain. I'm glad you knew you understand. It says it right here. You stubborn people. We can resist the thoughts of the Holy Spirit because of our own stubbornness. By thinking my thoughts are better than his thoughts. Now, nobody in their right mind, especially if you're a Christian and you go to church, nobody would say, oh yeah, my thoughts are better than God's thoughts. But what are our thoughts consumed of? Because here's what I know. Here's what I know. The Bible says to take captive of every thought that, is against, that comes against God. Take captive of every thought. Why? Because he knows if we don't take captive of those thoughts that are not of him, we'll have no space for his thoughts. Our lives, y'all know, if we can get up, caught up in our own thoughts and our own minds and our own struggles and our own situations, our own anxieties, our own fears, our own insecurities, our minds can race so much so that we have no space for the Holy Spirit and his thoughts in our lives. And this is how we can resist them. We resist the Holy Spirit because we're so caught up in our own thoughts. We're not giving space for the Holy Spirit and what he thoughts. I would challenge you as you're thinking all your thoughts and you're going through all your processes to stop and say, is this thought from the Holy Spirit? Is this the Holy Spirit's thought or is this my thoughts? Because let me tell you something. If it's, it causes insecurity, if it causes fears, if it causes anxiety, more than likely, I'm not even gonna say more than likely, no question about it, it is not the Holy Spirit. But we can get so caught up in that that we don't take captive of those thoughts and then we never leave room for the thoughts of the Holy Spirit on who, he, who you are to him, how he loves you, how he cares for you, how he's for you and how he's fighting with you and how he's there for you. He'll never leave you. There's all these incredible thoughts that the Lord wants us to think and the Holy Spirit wants to bring to us, but we can get so caught up in our own thoughts that we can miss. That's why the scripture says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're different. And it's very easy, hear me. It's very easy to distinguish the two. And I do this. I, I'll ask the Holy Spirit, help me. If I'm taking captive of thoughts, help me, Holy Spirit, to take captive of that thought because I want to think like you do. I want to think your thoughts. I want to think the way you think. I want to love the way you love and I want to see people the way you do. But we can resist that by just letting our minds wander in our, in our lives. I would ask you, next time you're at your job, in your classroom, in your dorm, in your home, in your neighborhood, and your mind starts to race, I would challenge you to evaluate your thoughts and ask yourself, say it out loud if you have to, is that from the Holy Spirit? 
is that thought of insecurity of about myself or about someone else. Is that, is that the Holy Spirit's thoughts? And allow, the whole, allow yourself to take captive of those thoughts so that you can really hear and think the way the Holy Spirit thinks. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse 16. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a mind that we can resist. The Holy Spirit has a will that we can quench. He says, this is the Lord's will for you and do not quench the Spirit. And when I say quench the Spirit, that means that what we're trying, the Holy Spirit's trying to do something in our lives or through us and we quench that by our own selfishness. I'll give you a perfect example. It's a very embarrassing story, but I'll share it anyway. I was on a plane a while back and I was on a plane, I was tired, I wasn't feeling well. It was one of those days where I'm, I'm a talker. Y'all know I'm a talker. If you know me, I'll hang out. We'll talk all day if you wanna talk all day. I like to kick it. I like that talk. I, just, I'm that guy. It was one of those days I did not feel like talking to anybody. I put the headphones on. I had big old beats. I put the big old beats on. I'm like, everybody knows this is the day. I'm not talking to anybody. I had the, my head, my, I put my hoodie on. I was a hood rat for the moment. I put the hood, I did everything. I was just literally, I, was, I don't wanna talk to anybody. I get on a plane, I'm on the window, and the guy sits next to me. I kind of go to sleep. I'm not feeling well. I'm like, I don't like planes. I'm, uh, I'm complaining, whatever. We get to the point where we're starting to land. You know, they like, ding, please land. You know, so I, I put the seat up, and I do the, I look over. As I pull my seat up, I look over, and the guy next to me is reading his Bible. Immediately, I heard the Holy Spirit. Immediately, I'm telling you, I heard the Holy Spirit say, talk to him about what he's reading. Do you know I started complaining to God to the point of where I lost my opportunity to do that? I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I'm, 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 I don't feel good. I, I, I talk to people all the time. I just, I'm just, I just want a minute. And then what happened by my arguments with God in my own mind, he closed his Bible up and he got up and he wa walked off. Can I tell you something? I quenched the Holy Spirit. Why did I quench the Holy Spirit? Because what I did was I said in my own selfishness in the way that I feel, I don't, I don't wanna do what the Holy Spirit's will is for me and for this person. And we do this often because here's what happens. From our own inconvenience, we look at the Holy Spirit and we look at what he's in his will and what he's asking us to do. And from our own, it, it looking like inconvenience, we miss that it's an invitation to be a part of what he is doing in me and in someone else. When the Holy Spirit speak to us, speaks to us, it, yes, it may seem like an, in, an inconvenience. It's not. It's an invitation to be a part of literally the God of the universe's will on this planet. And we miss it because of our own selfishness and inconvenience. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you that most of the time when the Holy Spirit speaks to us about his will, it's inconvenient. It's normally not when you feel like it. It's normally not like when you have one of those great days and you're like, man, I feel the spirit of God today. And you walking around, you're like, I'm ready to tell somebody about Jesus. No, more than likely, it's one of those days where you're emotionally broken. It's one of those days where you're down and you're out and you're feeling like you're nobody's there for you. And next thing you know, the Holy Spirit says, hey, I want you to call or text that person and tell them I love them. And you're like, well, I, no, I want somebody to love me. <laughs> and we miss because of our own selfishness and not wanting to be inconvenienced, we miss the invitation to be a part of God's will. See, so many people, especially young people, for the young people in the room and online, we pray this prayer of God, what's your will for me? And God, what's your plan? Uh, I just want to know his will and his plan. Uh, and we get so caught up in God's will and plan. His will and his plan is not a career. It's walking in obedience to his voice. And so that's what it is. And so for all of us in the room, I'm not just talking about young people, old people, come on somebody. I'm talking about all of us. We can get so caught up in the busyness and we can use the excuse of being busy to quench the Holy Spirit in our lives because we don't want to step out and do what he's asking us to do. He may tell you to go talk to that neighbor. Like, oh, I hate that neighbor though. Come on somebody. 
He may tell you, go talk to that coworker, and you're like, no, that's the coworker. Everybody, nobody likes that coworker. I ain't talking. He may do it. Well, here's the question. Just because you feel inconvenienced, that's not a question. Just because you feel inconvenienced, don't allow yourself and your selfishness to miss the invitation of the Holy Spirit's will for your life and someone else's. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He has a mind. We can resist. He has a will. And we can quench it. And lastly, as I close today, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom, you have, whom, with whom you have sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of behavior. The Holy Spirit's a person. To really walk in relationship and a friendship, I'll say it that way, a friendship with the Holy Spirit. You have to know he's a person with a personality. He has a mind that we can resist. He has a will that we can quench. But he also has emotions that we can grieve. The Bible says it right here that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes when we hear this concept of grieving the Holy Spirit, there's all these different terms and all these different thoughts and people can use it as when we grieve the Holy Spirit or we quench the Holy Spirit, that means we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in the way that we expect him to move. It's not what it means. Grieving the Holy Spirit is not that you get to the point of where God's so disappointed in you, he leaves you. It's not what grieving the Holy Spirit is. Grieving the Holy Spirit does not mean God doesn't love you and care about you. That's not what it means. Grieving the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that, it's, that you did something so wrong that now the Holy Spirit's mad at you. No, that's not what it means. Grieving the Holy Spirit means this. Grieving the Holy Spirit is because of something in my life, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, because of something in my life, because of my own way, of my own disobedience, because of my choices, what I have done is the Holy Spirit wants an intimate friendship relationship with me. And through the decisions I've made or choices I've made, I've interrupted or disrupted or disconnected. Did, I'd say disrupted, probably the best word. Disrupted my relationship with the Holy Spirit. I've disrupted the intimacy of the Holy Spirit. You ever done something real stupid and you feel like God, like, like I don't know what to do. Like I have all this, uh, uh, and you're like, okay, God, where are you? What's going on? And you, it, it's because you've grieved the Holy Spirit. All, and all it is, all it takes is God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you anymore. No, it just means you've grieved the Holy Spirit. So now as I ask for forgiveness, now here's what happens. Now the intimacy is reconnected. I love this because it's so practical. Paul is so practical in Ephesians. He says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Well, then my question always goes to, well, how do I do that? How do I grieve the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna show it to you right here as we read the scripture. In verse 31, it says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, and as well as all types of evil behavior. How do we really grieve the Holy Spirit? One, through bitterness. Bitterness grieves the Holy Spirit. Why does bitterness grieve the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked. Let me explain it. The bitterness, bitterness grieves, grieves the Holy Spirit because bitterness is a poison in our lives that keeps us from forgiving others. Bitterness is a poison in our lives that keeps us from forgiving. Now, here's what happens. When we keep, we don't forgive, here's what happens. Now, God can't forgive us. See, the Holy Spirit's goal, his purpose is to walk in relationship with you and I to help us be and look and live like Christ. Okay, to help us to know Christ and be like Christ. Now, here's what happens. We can't live like Christ with bitterness because we're no, there's no forgiveness in our hearts. See, Jesus, he, was a, he is always showing us forgiveness. Even while he was on the cross, he forgave. It's the same thing. So when we have bitterness, we grieve the Holy Spirit. There's this disruption in our, my relationship with God. You may be at a place where you're like, man, I don't know what my relationship with God, I don't know how it's, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, I'm trying, I'm praying. Well, maybe it's just you have bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart. And so you're not experiencing the intimacy that you desire to experience because God's waiting on you. I know that's harsh, but the Bible says it. God says it. If we don't forgive, well, we, we cannot be forgiven. And so how do you grieve the Holy Spirit? Through bitterness. Then he says, goes on, he says, he says with harsh words and slander. He says bitterness, rage, anger, all together. Then he says all together, anger, uh, harsh words and slander. 
by the way that we speak. We can grieve the Holy Spirit by the way that we speak. Are your words, are my words, are our words honoring others and honoring God? If they don't honor others and they don't honor God, we're grieving the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. Okay, so now I need to, okay, I got to change the way I speak. Totally fine. Holy Spirit, as you speak to me about how I speak, I want to shift that and change that. Why? Because Holy Spirit, I want to continue to live in intimacy with you. And then lastly, right here, it says, in all types of be- evil behavior. Another translation says malice. Another translation says iniquity. Okay? Malice, iniquity, evil behavior. We're not talking about, oops, I made a mistake, I sinned. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about when you talk about evil behavior, you're talking about iniquity or malice. We're talking about perpetual sin. See, sin is an act. Sin is an event. Iniquity, evil behavior, malice, it is not an event, it's a lifestyle. It's not a it's not an act, it's a habit in our lives. If you want to grieve the Holy Spirit, if you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, you need to evaluate your life. And is there perpetual sin in my life? Because if there is, that's going to create this disruption of my intimacy and my walk with God. And so how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? He has emotions. And so what we do, it doesn't mean his feelings are hurt. It doesn't mean he's mad at you. That's not what it is at all. It just means there's this disruption of my intimacy. And so now in order to continue to be intimate in my relationship and my walk with the Holy Spirit, I need to ask God to forgive me. And then as he forgives me, I'm renewed. And now I wanna change and shift, repent. I wanna shift the way that I think and live my life in that situation so that I can continue to walk in intimacy with God. Does that make sense? We're gonna talk all month long about the Holy Spirit. I'm super excited. I love talking about the Holy Spirit because he's God on earth and he's a helper. And I believe if we are a people that really wanna live the way God has called us to live, we have to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. So I'm hyped. If you're not hyped, I'm sorry. I hope you come back. If you don't wanna come back, I still love you. I'm sorry, but hey, we love you. But here's what I do know. we'll, We'll never truly walk in a personal relationship with God if we don't first understand the Holy Spirit. And we have to first, in order to understand the Holy Spirit, we have to first know he's not an it. He's not a thing. He's not some being far away. He's a person who walks with us daily. And not only is he a person, but he's got a personality. And that personality has a mind, a will, and emotions. And we can resist, we can quench, or we can grieve. And so the heart that we have to have is we say, we don't wanna do any of those, why? Because we desire to walk daily with him, amen? Can we pray today, Father, I thank you so much.